Get your paper and pen if you believe you need it. You're about to experience a great time of teachings. Let's get ready to go into the message. Is there anybody wanting to hear something from the Lord today? Hopefully you brought your heart and your attention because today we're going to have a very, very uncomfortable conversation. But look at your neighbor and say, this conversation is necessary. It's necessary. Oh, okay. Y'all already resisted me. I need you to say it with a little more conviction. Say, even though it's uncomfortable, it's necessary. So meet me as we discuss this in the book of Proverbs chapter 9 the book of Proverbs chapter 9 grateful for all that the Lord has done and is doing but the Lord is going to convict us today he's going to challenge us Proverbs chapter 9 I'm going to be pulling from verse 10 and it reads like this it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Today I want to have a conversation about the fear of the Lord. Can you take your seats and just recite that? Say the fear of the Lord. In order to begin this conversation, I had to consult with one of the most trusted and prophetic sources of our time. According to Google, fear is defined as something that causes us to be afraid out of a impeding danger or threat. And when we're talking about fear today, it's important to understand that fear is real. There are many forms of fear. Uh, most of us are fearful of, not most of us, but many of us, some of us are fearful of spiders, fearful of heights, fearful of confined spaces. Fear. Some of us have a fear of flying. Some of us have a fear of snakes. Um, those are more common fears. Some of us have some unique fears like uh, sleeping with the light off in your house. Some of us have a fear of the dark, fear of driving in the rain, fear of being alone, fear of failure. The reality, family, is that as crazy and as real as fear is, fear is something that we all have to confront so that we won't live a life that is governed by the fears in our life. But we live a life that is full of our faith in the Lord. We talked about the many different forms of fear. There is Fear that can be induced by traumatic experiences. Where some of us have suffered or went through trying and hard times. And as a result, anything that looks like what we've been through instills, creates fear within us. A person that their sound, their words just remind us of a traumatic experience. It causes us to have emotions of Fear, a particular color, a particular car, a particular scene, a particular moment begins to, just at the very thought of it, create fear within us. It's interesting to me that in the Bible, there the word fear itself and its synonymous terms uh, amount to approximately 500 mentions in the Bible. 500. And what I find interesting about that is fear is not just a reality that we have faced and are facing but it's a reality of the world of the scripture we are not the first people to have fears that we have to confront we are not the first to have fears that we have to fight against we are not the first to have fears 
that are healthy and unhealthy. But one thing that I want to bring out to your attention that you may not have considered is it actually takes faith to fear. Oh, wait a minute. You got to understand that the way fear works is it's a conviction about a particular thing. It's a belief about a particular conclusion. So it, where faith is, we believe for the best. Fear is we are believing for the worst. No matter what narrative or results or problems we have, many of us are pessimistic in our interaction with it because we don't think about it in terms of how God can produce the best out of it. Most of us think about the worst conclusion, the worst result, the worst outcome, the worst happening and occurrence of this situation. And so and, and, and we can actually coin fear as miss led faith misappropriated faith faith that is not used to believe God for what is right to believe God for what is going to produce results but 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 fear is where we are believing for an ulterior or a negative outcome so you got to think about it family when you are encountering your situations when you're encountering your opposition you are really using your faith in the wrong direction. You are really misappropriating, misusing, and abusing your faith. Instead of trusting God with the situation, if your result is fear and panic and anxiety and stress and loss of sleep and worry, could it be that the faith that God has given us, we're using it in the wrong direction? An interesting fact about fear is that of all of the mentions in scripture and all that that fear is in its existence, it really has incited by four things. In order to have fear, there has to be potentiality. In order for there to be fear, there has to be a reality. In order for there to be fear, there has to be some type of proximity. And in order for there to be fear, you have to have an awareness of some sort of vulnerability. For you to fear a line, you have to be aware of its potential. You have to realize its threat to your life. You have to be aware that how close I am to it could endanger me because the strength that a lion or a bear may have could, could make me vulnerable to the danger that it can impede upon me. I'm, I'm going to have a little fun because all of us, whether we acknowledge it or not, we have some fears in our lives. Um, as I was walking inside here, from my car, I, I found something, um, a form of creation, just sitting on the ground. I wish I could call Justine, the first lady up here, to, to really help me with this illustration, but I'm going to let y'all make it today. I'm going to let you make it today. But I'm not going to tell you what's in here, but if I were to hand this and just walk towards some of you and just mention a lizard or just mention a roach or just mention a spider or just mention uh, some type of insect or device, some of, somebody's feeling jittery right now. I should call walk up to a few of you just see what you do. Ooh, I told you I want to have a little fun today. But I'm not going to tell you what's in here, but if, if just the idea of the potential incites and evokes a particular emotion. Someone, I, I bet you want to know what's in here. I'm going to make you wait. I'm going to make you wait. I, I bet some of you, all you need is for someone to just point in a particular direction and start running. And all of us may just start running. Come on, can we be honest? That's how fear works. If you just get one insight, some one person tell you you're in danger, you might start packing your stuff and getting ready to go. Fear has really been used and weaponized in our world to oppress people and to depress people and to harm and create panic and anxiety. That's why we got to be aware of what we watch on the news. We got to be aware of what we watch on social media. We got to be aware of the information we take because fear is informed by something. 
Your emotions, your feelings, they are informed by someone's thoughts. And if you don't take those thoughts captive, you'll fall victim of misinformation, information that may be truth in reality, but it's not truth in accordance to the word of God. But, but some situations in our lives, we are ap applying the wrong truths that is causing us to feel a certain way about how we're going through, about what God said, about what God is doing but let me remind you today no matter what fear is in your life if you have it if you have your faith in the right place no matter what comes against you no matter what comes against you there is a solution for every problem that you face look at your neighbor and say you do not have to fear tell yourself i don't have to fear about everything as a matter of fact in my research i found out that of the 500 plus mentions of fear 365 of those are a fear not command, which some scholars would suggest you got to fear not for every day of the year. Every day, no matter what's going on in my life, I need to wake up and just declare, no matter what I got to face in my job, I'm not going to fear because I got God with me. No matter what I got to face within my family because I have God with me, I don't have to fear. No matter what kind of bill, what kind of debt, what kind of result, what kind of issue, what kind of pain I have in my life, look at your neighbor and tell them, you do not have to fear. You don't have to fear. Some of us may not fear insects, lizards, and ants. I ought to walk to somebody right now and just see what you do. Look, I, I, <laughs> the saints' facial expressions start changing when I start walking. But, but even if your fear isn't an insect, even if your fear isn't a, a, a person, your fear isn't a bug, some of us fear man. You have allowed and will allow what people say and their power and their influence cause you to feel a certain way, not about other people, but about yourself. You will allow the authority of other people cause you to feel less about what God says you are, all because you have put too much value on the things that people say. Can I give you some truth that you really need to just take in your life? Some people are just lying when they say certain stuff about you. Not every, not every word, not every information, not every piece of, of, of information that they say about you is the truth. And you do not have to accept it just because they say it. Because if you do, it may evoke fear in your life. If you want to write something down, this may be something to write down on the tablet of your heart or in your phone or in your notes, whatever. This is a statement that I need you to take with you everywhere you go. Man has an allowance of power, but God has all power. Can you recite that with me? Man has an allowance of power, but God has all power. Come on, one more time, a little bit louder. Shout, man has an allowance of power, but God has all power. It's important that we live with this revelation because within our interactions with mankind, with people, with humans, no matter what abilities and amenities they have, look at somebody and tell them people still have limits. Yeah, yeah, they may be the president, but he still has limits. They may be your boss but they still have limits. They may be above you, some type of superiority over you, but you ought to declare out loud, they still have limits. No matter what they say, somebody that's still writing that check, no matter what they do, somebody can cancel them. No matter who they are, what family they come from, they still have limits because man has an allowance of power, but God has all I'm reminded of 2 Kings chapter 6. And there is a, a fight going on and against the children of Israel. And I find it very interesting that fear broke out amongst the children of Israel. The people that have seen God do 
miracles and wonders and works. People that have, have experienced the protecting power of God. Look at what, if you have your Bibles, look at what 2 Kings 6 and 14 says. Therefore he sent horses, chariots, and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Master, what shall we do? He's looking at his surroundings and he's seeing they're outnumbered. He's looking at his surroundings and with his natural eye, he's seeing He's seeing a threat. It's, it's evoking fear in his life. Look at what the prophet says in verse 17, verse 16. So he answered and says, do not fear. Somebody shout, do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those with them. Here it is. And Elijah prayed and he said, Lord, I pray that you open his eyes, that he, that, that he, the eyes of the young man, that he see the, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots and Syrians, and they came down to him, and Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike these people. I pray with blindness, and he struck them with blindness according to the word of the Lord. If you go down, you'll see that when his eyes were opened, the man was able to see the armies and the angels that outnumbered them. It, it, it outnumbered the natural realm because of what they had in the spiritual realm. And this is what fear would do to us sometimes. Fear will blind you of your spiritual reality because of the engagements of your natural reality. And so God wants to remind you today that no matter what your natural reality is saying, you ought to get your insight from the spiritual reality. You ought to get your insight from what God is saying from what God is doing and from who God is. Instead of Elijah praying, give us more strength and give us more time and give us more to fight with, he prayed that his eyes be opened. And that's the prayer that I'm praying with you and I today. That when fear comes, we see it through the lens of God. There's another illustration that comes in Daniel chapter 6 where Daniel is in the lion's den because man tried to doom him. Man with his authority had a law and, and according to Daniel's actions he broke man's law and man in effort to try to enforce man's law tried to doom Daniel to death by putting him in a den of lions. Can I tell you what was our statement? That man has an allowance, but God has all power. No matter what man tries to doom you with, we still serve the deliverer. And God will, will put, even though what man tries to doom you with his allowance of power, God will give you deliverance in the midst of it. Showing, uh, showing you, showing your enemy, showing creation that I am all powerful. And the story goes to show that, that Daniel is just chilling with the lions. The very lions that man tried to doom him with. God is showing that I'm more powerful than man. God is showing that I can change the nature of things on your behalf. And I don't know who that's for, but God wants you to know that no matter what the functionality of your problem, of your opposition is, God has the power to change the nature, to change the function, to change its power, to change its, to change its impact on your life. That's the fear of man. Fear of man causes us to physically feel the effects. You ever been so anxious that you start shaking? You ever been so scared that you are frozen? 
You ever been so fearful that you don't do anything? You're immobilized, not necessarily because of what has happened, or, or but the idea of what will and may happen. The, the fact that there's a threat causes some of us to freeze. This is the fear of man. Another fear that I want to bring to your attention is the fear of the unknown. Some of us are asking right now, you're in a situation and you don't see how this could be turned around. You don't see what God is doing. You don't see how this can be made. Just like the children of Israel, when they were, when the army of Egypt was behind them and the Red Sea was in front of them and God tells them to go here, they don't see how they can get out of this situation. I got a mountain. They got an enemy behind them, a, a dead end in front of them. And like many of us, we are in a situation today. Some of you may be in a situation right now where you're trying to figure out, God, how am I going to get out of this? I can't see a victory. I can't see a way out. I can't see an escape. I can't see how to bounce back. I can't see how to avoid this impeding threat and danger. It's the fear of not knowing how, not having enough in, uh, information, not having enough answers, not having enough resources, not having enough help in the natural to see where this is going. And as a result, because we don't know, it creates fear within us. Matthew 6 says something that I think would help us in these type of moments. 6 and 34 says, Therefore, don't you worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. While you're worrying about things that you can't control and you don't have enough information about, God is trying to remind you today, fear is not the option you should choose in that predicament. If you don't have the information, your response to this is to trust the one who does. If you don't know what's going to happen next, you ought to trust the one who can do something about your next. If you don't have enough insight about the unknown, about the future, about the next step, about the next move, the thing to do is not fear, but to have faith in the one that can do, that does know, that is all-knowing, that is all-powerful, that is the deliverer and the way maker. Somebody ought to say, I should be trusting in God. So family, I, I think it's important for you and I to really focus on the presence of fear in our lives and look at our contribution to its existence. You got to understand, we declared earlier that it is misappropriated faith. You have to believe a particular result for you to take on that emotion for it to affect you in that certain way. Ask yourself, family, what do I believe about what I'm going through? I'm setting all of this up to have this very, very real moment because the problem with a lot of us is that we tend to overestimate things that we don't have enough information about. We begin to add priority and value to things that we don't have the control of. And because we don't have the information, guess what we do? We fill in our own blanks, telling ourselves what will happen. Telling ourselves of how much danger we're in. We make our own predictions and our own estimations and come to our own conclusions about the problems in our lives. And as a result, we overestimate a situation that takes faith in God to get us out of. Let's dig into it, family. I may hurt your feelings. But when you're in fear... Have you noticed 
you start moving with urgency, when you're afraid, when something is bothering you, have you noticed how much energy you get to try to get a way of escape? If someone is chasing you, you haven't even thought about what's with you or, or what you need to leave. Some of us are so urgent and so fearful that we just drop everything and go. I don't remember what movie or scene it was, but this man who's supposed to be the protector of his family, their family was in danger. He dropped the baby, left the wife, left the kids, left everything, and just dusted everybody out of fear. But let's not get mad at him because we do the same thing in different expressions. Think about you in your own life, something that you were afraid of, and your response didn't reflect trust and dependency in God. When you're in fear, not only do we tend to move with urgency, but we move with intentionality. Somebody going to run. Somebody going to make a plan. Hey, come on, let's get our stuff. Let's go. Let's, this ain't the time to play. We got somewhere to go. Some of us, we move with urgency. We move with intentionality. But when you're really afraid, when you're really in fear, you move with sincerity. This ain't the time to play. I find that interesting because in terms of fearing man and fearing the unknown and the phobias that we have, we move with urgency, intentionality, and sincerity as it relates to things that don't match the power of our God. And this is what hurt my feelings, and it may hurt yours. In the way that we overestimate man and the unknown, we all have underestimated the authority, the power, and the strength of our God. This is the lesson that meets us in our text because in Proverbs Solomon is talking and giving wisdom to his son and sons about how to navigate through their life. He's given them wisdom. He's given them insights on things to think about as you grow, as you build, as you develop, as you think about marriage, as you think about wealth. He gives them insights over and over again about how to live through their life. And one of the things he says is, in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to make good choices in your life? Starts with the fear of the Lord. You want to make wise and the best choices in your life? It doesn't start with the things you want to do. It doesn't start with how gifted you are. It doesn't start with the inheritance you've come from in your family. It starts with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is so important, family, because Solomon, the wisest man, according to scripture, thought it important to list it 11 times in just the book of Proverbs. The fear of the Lord this, the fear of the Lord that, the fear of the Lord this, the fear of the Lord that, the fear of the Lord this. The wisest man trying to impart wisdom on his son felt it necessary to remind him over and over and over again to let him know that don't get this twisted. Something you need to prioritize is the fear of the Lord. It's what good parents do. When they realize the world that their children are having to come up in, trying to prepare them for a future, trying to prepare them for a future battles and future enemies. And in the same way, the Lord is reminding us through this conversation, don't forget who I am. I'm sorry this isn't going to make us shout today. But it is a necessary conversation because the difference between the fear of man, fear of the unknown, and the fear of God, 
is that because we have a relationship with God, our fear isn't danger induced. It's based on two things, reverence and respect. Can you say that? Reverence and respect. So to fear man, it requires some type of threat in your life. Fear of the unknown, it requires a lack of information. But the fear of the Lord that is exemplified in this text is a fear not of God's wrath, per se, but a reverence of who he is and what he's capable of and who you are in comparison to him. This relationship with God, this fear isn't, uh, this relationship isn't fear-based with God. This base, this relationship with God, this, this, this fear that we have in God is based off of an adoration. It's an awe of who he is. Write this down. As I fear the Lord, I reference his existence. The fact that God is real, the fact that God is God, we ought to honor that in our lives. Psalms 14 and 1 says, A fool says in his heart, there is no God. How many of us have been living our lives as if God isn't aware of us and our moves and how we talk to our loved ones and how we treat our spouses and how we treat our family and children, how we treat ourselves and our bodies as if God isn't watching the moves we're making. Fear the Lord is an act of reverence. It's an awareness of God's goodness to us that we should wake up every day fearing the Lord. God, I thank you for breath. I wouldn't have it if it weren't for you. God, I thank you for life. I wouldn't be alive if it weren't for you. God, I thank you for being good and glorious and powerful and mighty and righteous and holy. Solomon tells his son, as you go through life, prioritize the fear of the Lord. Contrary to the fear of man and contrary to the fear of the unknown, the fear of the Lord includes reverence, and respect. It's an awareness of the authority God has over creation. That as we serve and follow God, we ought to live it in the way that our God tells us to. Not led by what we want to do. Not led by how we feel. But it's led by following the standards of God. Am I still your friend? Reality family is that the fear of the Lord is something that has to return to the body of Christ. It has to come back into our families and our churches and our, and our communities. Think of how different our family dynamics would be if they made their decisions towards you and towards resources and towards themselves in light of the fear of the Lord. Think of the, 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 the statistics in violence, the statistics in, in our wars, and statistics in oppression and depression, how they would dramatically drop if people would just consider I live my life out of respect and reverence to God. It's the beginning of wisdom. Okay, here's something you can smile about. If and when you prioritize the fear of the Lord, there are benefits. Okay, I'm your friend again. I can tell. Okay, okay. That there are benefits. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 14 and 27 that the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. The fear of the Lord in another scripture tells us that it invites 
no lack. It's in the Psalms. The fear of the Lord, it says, it, it, it is a, it is, the fear of the Lord leads to life and then one rests in contentment because the Lord protects them from trouble. You got to understand that the fear of the Lord does require your obedience, but it doesn't come without benefits. That as you prioritize God in your life, in the areas that, that matter the most, God will take care of you. God will cover you. God will provide for you. God will protect you. God will sustain you. That as you begin to value God, God will begin to reveal more of his miracle working power in your life. And I dare you to trust God enough with your life. Trust God enough with your heart. Trust God enough with your obedience. Trust God enough with your fear in him. Trust God enough with your worship. Trust God enough with your praise. Trust God enough with everything. Everything that you have and everything that you are and watch God begin to produce fruit in your life. Watch God begin to produce blessings in your life. Watch God begin to sustain what you have. Watch God begin to develop what you have. Watch God begin to shower you with blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. The fear of the Lord is important, family. We have to live our lives in a way that reverences God and respects God. 